Welcome. I'm Lisa Scoffing. I'm the Head of Talent for World Vision Australia, one of Australia's largest uh, charity organisations and forces for good to improve the lives of the world's most vulnerable children. This afternoon I'm going to be sharing with you some insights to our leadership development program and particularly focusing upon the integration of Coach Hub, our digital coaching platform. I'm hoping you can walk out of here with one to two ideas that might help you with the challenges that you're facing in your own workplaces with regards to leadership development in a hybrid world. And I'm hoping that you remember what I'm about to cover and not necessarily be remembered as the presentation that you all made paper aeroplanes. <laughs> but there was some methods to my madness in having you do that activity in that it actually demonstrated some of the challenges that we were facing at World Vision Australia when it came to leadership development in a hybrid world. The first one was visibility. Is this the right button? There we go, or lack of visibility. Hmm. Asking you to close your eyes with someone that you might have just met required a fair amount of trust trust in who they were and also in their capability. In a hybrid world, it is really hard to get uh, visibility of leadership effectiveness. I mean, if you have a Zoom meeting with them or schedule wherever they might be, it is quite challenging to actually identify where they are doing well, but also their development opportunities too. Varying development needs. How many of you coaches actually opened up the session by asking your partner if they actually knew how to make a paper aeroplane? Oh, we've got a couple. Fantastic. There we go. For all we know, we've probably got some origami masters in this room here today that can make a fighter jet. But I think looking at a couple of the aeroplanes, no one in particular, it might have been a few years since we've made a paper aeroplane. Um, but with the varying development needs, like many of you, we have emerging leaders. We have experienced leaders. We have aspiring leaders too as well, all with varying needs. We also found during the pandemic, even some of our most experienced leaders were actually struggling because the principles that they had been taught and gained over the years were no longer applicable. They were quite challenged by not interacting with their staff on a day-to-day -day basis. The administration. If we had all of the coaches in this room here today, I would have had to go out and get three quotes from each of you, raise a purchase order for each of you, and then actually invoiced for all of them too as well. That administration is quite significant. And as a not-for-profit, but also like many learning organisations, that the teams that you have are quite lean. So therefore, I need to ensure that the work that my employees are doing are where they add the most valuable value, and not necessarily on the administration work. It's not the best place for them to use their time, uh, or also the skills that they have too as well. And finally, the overall value too as well. Again, like many organisations, we have that budget, um, that we need to work for and ensure that we are actually prioritising against strategy and that whatever employee development that we do offer um, delivers that value not only to the individual but also to the organisation as well. Now, we were fortunate at World Vision back in 2021 to actually receive a coaching grant from International Coaching Foundation and this actually gave 15 of our leaders access to a number of months of leadership coaching. That coaching demonstrated to us the real value of coaching in a hybrid workplace environment. However, looking at the challenges that we face, traditional coaching wasn't actually going to solve all the issues that we were facing. So we therefore needed to go out to tender and actually identify a solution that could address a number of key criteria. The first criteria, obvious one, was visibility. We needed to somehow gain visibility of the strengths and development needs of the people in our business, so the leaders in our business. But I, but I also wanted to gain visibility of who's using it, how often, and when they're using it too as well. Gaining that visibility then allowed me with other work that we're doing when it comes to leadership development, that I could either measure it or also align other efforts too as well. It needed to be flexible. Flexible working, okay, flexible learning. We also really wanted to empower our leaders to take ownership for their own growth and development. I didn't want this to be something that I coordinate, I administer, I schedule. We wanted to be flexible regardless of where they were working. With a variety of development needs, we also needed a variety of coaches with different skill sets and experience to match the different levels of experience but also the challenges that we're facing in the workplace too as well. It needed to be easy. Over the last two years, there has been so much change in the organisation adding another system that might make it easier from an admin standpoint, but from a user experience, it's like no matter how simple it was, like, oh, another system that I've got to learn. So it needed to be easy from the user experience, but also easy from an administration experience too as well. Um, streamlining processes, making it more efficient for us too as well. And finally, the value. 
one of the key values at World Vision is that we are good stewards. So anytime we enter into a third party agreement, we need to ensure there is true value in terms of cost, yes, the bottom line that we have, but also value in terms of return of investment to us all. So after going out to tender, applying this assessment criteria in addition to some other pieces, we identified Coach Hub as our digital coaching partner. So Coach Hub is a digital coaching solution that provides you with personalised, measurable and scalable coaching programs. Their programs have been developed in, in partnership with leading experts in leadership and coaching. And with 3,500 uh, coaches across 60, uh, 90 countries, we knew that they would be able to support our employees regardless of where they were located and the time zone too as well. How many of you have seen the movie um, oh, Field of Dreams? Field of Dreams? Yep, awesome. So we know with Field of Dreams where Kevin Costner, don't worry, I'm showing my age. Um, <laughs> and I'm so glad they didn't do my intro song because that really showed my age. Uh, the film, uh, Kevin Costner with Field of Dreams, he built the baseball field in the middle of the cornfields in the middle of nowhere and hey, they all turned up, awesome. Simply implementing digital coaching didn't mean that everybody was going to use it. Um, so we then did um, some framework around it to ensure that it was going to be su successful in our organisation. The first one was identifying who. Who is going to participate in the coaching program? Now, we're fortunate at World Vision that we encourage every single employee to complete what we call a talent and career profile. This talent and career profile identifies their current strengths, their development opportunities, but also their career aspirations, even if that career is outside of World Vision. We also have succession dashboards. Um, like many of you do, you'll have your succession plans. Um, we take it to a variety of levels. We're really focusing upon that capability move across, not just that hierarchy move too as well. We were very clear, and we did this deliberately in a hybrid world to make it very clear as to who's been selected, how they've been selected, and also why. It meant that those people who were selected were receiving an, an informal way of recognition of that th the organisation is actually investing in their development, but also we wanted to encourage those people, maybe who weren't selected or who have aspirations to be a leader, um, to actually know, okay, this is what I need to do. The first is you have to have a talent and career profile. No talent and career profile, you're not considered for the program. All right, so it's a win-win for them. The next thing that we did is we explained the why. And this was a key part, and you'll find that this is a key theme when I go through this afternoon. This wasn't a PNC or a talent development initiative. This was actually led by the manager. We were the enabler. So when an employee actually found out that they were being offered this coaching opportunity, it was their manager that informed them, not PNC. And we did that deliberately because we wanted to ensure that we continue to build and maintain that uh, relationship with manager and employee. It also meant the manager had some skin in the game too as well. And now whilst we're trying to encourage employees to take ownership of their own growth and development, by having the manager involved in the process too as well, it meant that they were cre uh, creating additional opportunities for them to grow and develop. And then finally, once we knew who was participating and they were informed why they were participating, we then brought the group together as a way to connect with their peers. So being quite open as to who was part of the initial coach coaching uh, group, they had a chance to introduce each other, uh, get to know one another. We invited the managers to be there once again as a show of support. And that particular session was also done in partnership with Coach Hub, where they learnt about the logistics of the system, how the program actually works for them too as well. We then did a mid-program catch-up. Now this wasn't, I have a team in talent development of 1.5, so it's quite a lean team. Um, but this mid-coach uh, uh, catch-up was half an hour. It was just half an hour to reconnect, uh, for them to catch up what's going well, share their experiences of things that are working well. Uh, one that we had, which is a common thing that people say, is I just, I'm struggling to find time in my day to actually set aside for coaching. Um, and it wasn't myself that had to come up with the, with the solutions, it was actually their peers that actually said, yeah, I get what you're saying, here's what I do. And one of them was, I mean, seem, might seem logical to a lot of us, they said Friday morning, nine o'clock, that was my coaching session. It was blocked out of my calendar. Psychologically, I knew that was the day that I was actually going to be doing my coaching. And it worked for the employee. So once we've done that, we then moved on to actually using the system itself. As I mentioned before, one of the things the system needed to be or the solution needed to be, it needed to be easy. So once we had identified who was participating in the coaching, they were then set up with their own unique login that was accessible either via their iPhone or also on their computer. They were then prompted to complete their own individual coaching assessment. 
So remember I spoke about getting that visibility of what are their strengths and development needs? This particular coaching assessment assessed their strengths and development needs and then actually recommended two to three coaches that matched that requirement for them. Right? Again, enforcing that piece of empowering the employee to take ownership of, who, uh, of their own growth and development, they then chose their own coach right, based upon that profile. Now, many of you will have set up coaching before where it might have been traditional, um, sort of like set up where it would be an external individual or an organisation. You'll know the importance of ensuring that there's a strong relationship and rapport between the individual and coach. One coach can't train everybody because they're different skill sets, different behaviours, and sometimes they've just got to click, which is one of the things that I really love with, co with Coach Hub is that at the end of each session, the individual employee is actually asked to rate their coach on a scale of one to five and also provide feedback. So what you see here is what I see as an administrator. At any time I can log in and actually say, okay, what's the quality of the coaching at the moment? What is the feedback that's happening? A great measure here to, uh, I guess, look at the quality of the coaching, but also in the first few sessions, Coach Hub also monitor that at any point that it falls below 4.7, they'll actually reach out to the individual just to say, hey, is there any concerns that we need to be aware of? Um, they do have an opportunity to change coaches if necessary, uh, but we haven't had anyone change at this point of the process. Now, if employee, bra employee branding or engagement is a challenge that you have in the workplace, um, we pleasantly surprised the other week that we had an employee off their own back actually post on social media their experience with Coach Hub, their specific coach, uh, but also acknowledging World Vision's investment in them as an employee. So sending a really strong message, you can see there I was very quick to respond uh, because it was a nice <laughs> surprise on there. Um, but that was unin uninitiated by us. They did it off their own back too as well. Over the last 18 months, we've had a new CEO on board, uh, Daniel Wordsworth, uh, who's been having a strong focus on giving clarity and reconnecting all of our employees to our vision and our values. Uh, this has been done through a variety of different things that we've been doing with our leaders, but also employees too as well. Um, the reason I share that is what you see on the board here is the summary of that strengths assessment and the actual development assessment too as well. It's a great example here that is actually showing that work that we are doing outside of the coaching, so other leadership development, the success of the program is actually becoming visible through this particular assessment here. So you can clearly see that vision, values and collaboration, again, it was a real yay <laughs> sort of thing, uh, but it just was a different measure that we could say all these things that we're doing are having success, but also means that, hey, there's a few areas that if we're doing other work in the development space, here's some things that we can do to align to have greater impact for our leaders who then obviously influence the employees too as well. Giving further empowerment to the employee and also the flexibility as to where they spend their time in their coaching sessions. At the beginning of each coaching session, they're actually asked to pick a theme for the session. Um, and now whilst in a co coaching conversation, you will never know the conversation because it is confidential, what this actually does show me is that here's a summary of the themes that people are being coached on to as well. Again, enabling me to align other efforts, uh, but at no time do I actually know what the individual is actually being coached on as well. At an individual level, I can see the status of each person. So whether they have started, whether they're inactive, whether they're yet to complete their assessment or select their coach. I can see how many sessions that they've had, their start and finish date. What I use this information for, once again, is if I've got someone that's doing really, really well, they've got six, seven sessions, whatever it is, might be going in two months, I actually reach out to their managers, manager and say, hey, Joe's doing really well, um, great job, keep up the support and the work, use that as an opportunity to connect and reinforce that behaviour that we want, but also look to create those opportunities of how they can apply whatever it is that they're being coached on into the workplace. At the same time, we use it in the reverse, when someone's not probably optimising the opportunity for them, we encourage the manager um, to reach out to them, see what's going on, uh, what can they do to help and support them to actually uptake the usage as well. So again, the criteria there, I've got that visibility, what they're being coached on, where are the strengths and development needs so I can align other things within the organisation, but also allowing the employee to actually select, okay, what are the things that I need to be coached on? So our overall value, um, we've implemented in March this year, so it's only been six months. Uh, we've had 32 participants. We've actually had over 220, so when I compiled this coaching session, that was the, or this presentation, that was the number at the time. 
Um, if retention is an issue for you, um, at this point, all of them still work for us. Um, so 100% retention, so tick on that one. Um, but also one of the most powerful, and again, it is early stages, is that um, those employees participating in the program that have had four or more coaching sessions, 48% of them actually had an improvement in their performance rating through as well. So um, I'd like to say it's all because of coaching, not necessarily the case, but it could be partly too, but that actually um, sends a very, very strong message in terms of the application of the behaviours. The other thing at the moment, I think today's Tuesday, so it must be this Wednesday, tomorrow, uh, we're closing off our six-month employee engagement and satisfaction survey, so we do a pulse check halfway through the year. Um, I'm anticipating there'll be some data I can actually draw out to actually see across the different areas if there's been any cultural or behavioural impact to as well. So overall, we're very happy with the way that digital coaching with Coach Hub is working for us. As you can see here, we've got that framework around that supports that success. Um, so if there's three things I can offer you to take away from this session. The first is transparency, particularly in a hybrid world. Transparency of the process of how people are selected and why they're selected. It takes away any of that... Um, I guess, concern, particularly when people in a hybrid work environment where they may not have understood the email, seen the email, or they'll say, oh, okay, how come Mary gets the coaching and I don't, sort of thing, that it actually puts it back onto them, okay, this is the criteria that we've selected. Um, it sends a great message to the employees, but also sends, I guess, establishes great integrity for your team too as well, that, hey, this is the process we apply, we're fair and consistent with what we do. The next part is peer connection. Successful leadership cannot be achieved in isolation. It requires that connection. Right? So by having that get catch up beforehand, bringing the group together, we also have what's called coffee roulette, where we randomly assign people just to catch up over a coffee to check in how things are going. And whilst there is clear value in the coaching itself uh, in terms of their uh, developing their specific leadership needs and the people that they lead, don't underestimate the value of talking to someone else in the organisation that might have similar challenges or know the same people. So peer connection is quite critical. And then finally is the leader involvement. Involvement, As I said before, this wasn't PNC-led. Right? We were the enabler. We were setting the leaders up for success, whether that be informing their managers, providing them with the tools and information so that they can then connect directly with their employees to build that rapport, that trust uh, and that culture uh, within their teams too as well. An interesting point that um, the numbers aren't that significant at the moment, but I am starting to see a direct correlation between the number of coaching sessions and the level of leader involvement too as well. So there is a direct impact, both positive and negative too. Right. So if there's one thing we can take from leadership development in a hybrid world is that traditional leadership development programs aren't as, as effective as what they once, be, once were. We need to look at different ways to accommodate the different needs of the people that we have in our organisation, but also their time, their place, their availability and flexibility when it comes to leadership development. By implementing Coach Hub, the digital coaching platform for us as part of our leadership development program, we've really sent a strong message to employees that we genuinely care about them, we want to invest in their, in their development, but also support them in that hybrid world so they can actually access training at a time, at a place that actually suits them. It also means that it's personalised to their needs and also the challenges that they face in the organisation too as well. And finally, for us as an organisation, um, I have streamlined the process for invoicing. I don't have 50 <laughs> invoices that I have. I have one invoice that I receive um, for regardless whatever number of people that I have participating in the coaching. As you saw here with the samples, that actually was our data, the screenshots that I showed you. As an administrator, I can log on at any time and actually see who's using it, what are the key themes, what are the strengths. It really adds value to other programs that we're doing when it comes to leadership development uh, too as well. So um, that is it for me. So, um, yeah.